Joe Rogan, call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we are recording now. Okay. <laughs> We're live. Uh, we have gathered here for a uh, continued uh, chat about our about to begin journey project collision course. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been uh, w we've been uh, discussing in the previous recorded session. We've been discussing the characters who uh, make up the collision course and what are their dynamics. We spent a lot of time uh, discussing our uh, titular or not titular, just 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 our our resident bad guy, uh, Servo, aka. Dr. Servonius, mm -hmm. uh, who at first glance is just a mad scientist, <laughs> but uh, his other incarnations can differ. And now, just be before I hit record, uh, we were discussing some other characters, and uh, the point was that certain characters running into certain information or finding certain facilities uh, is often the doing or at least is often due to the influence of the uh, quote-unquote good servo <laughs> so basically the uh, the guy on the higher reality level uh, who is able to interact with various re reality layers which are not synchronized with each other and while the mad scientists or servos in each given reality level and the parallel realities within it uh, while they do their re research on some narrower topics uh, regarding the nature of, of the reality and uh, and usually they they are kept that way. Then the top servo or prime servo or Murphy servo, uh, he he is the one uh, who tries to influence the big picture. And part of influencing the big picture or the how how events echo and. Uh, uh, echo through the different layers of realities and how they and how the different layers then echo back or or, or reflect in the uh, final emergent reality. Uh, one of one of his uh, key points is that you can't meddle w uh, with events too directly. So if if you are coming from a position of knowledge and you are switching from one reality to another then you can't just uh, start uh, winning bets there because <laughs> that will fuck shit up mm -hmm. so whatever manipulations you do you have to sort of let certain things have to have to play out uh, as they do you can't interfere too much and uh, and when you do interfere it's better to just sort of nudge a little bit mm -hmm. and this brings me back to the, <laughs> the thought that I was holding and this brings me back to an important question uh, who gave scribe the task to retrieve that information from that facility and by extension who gave the mercenaries the task to uh, EMP that facility so that scribe would be able to enter it both very good questions. Uh, the original point, uh, okay, so this, this doesn't answer the question, but it might give you an idea of some of my thinking. Originally when Scribe uh, discovers this facility in Scribe and the Doctor, it's it's potentially not his first, the first place he's been to. He went to one place, fulfilled his contract for someone by taking information from that place back to them. But because of what he saw at that first facility, he is now sort of more driven on a personal level to see this through to the end. That's how that's originally how I thought it. It seems that that's developed over time, and he has been hired by a certain person to see this all the way through to the end. Who that person is, no idea. Uh, in 
Cal Devaza, there's a bit of an unreliable narrator thing with Rafa, and he and Casca have a, a really unreliable conversation about what they believe the scribe to scribes to be, essentially. But they, they, I think they get it wrong. They sort of compare them to data pirates, which it's wrong, essentially. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know. I don't. Know oh, I do know. That's you, okay. That's, right, that's okay. why I'm leading. <laughs> that's why I'm leading up to it. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, whoever uh, did the manual ordering, quote unquote, like who mm -hmm. whoever ordered the pizza, he was uh, or they they were operating uh, by uh, under the nudging of the of the Murphy station. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's like um mm. giving people certain jobs to expose them to certain suspicious information uh I would say this is one reliable and uh, nudging method when it comes to uh mm -hmm. interactions between the Murphy level and the other streams of reality so it's like i can't tell you uh, let, let's say we are uh, we are three levels downstream from the uh, top real 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 or top top level of reality and somebody up there who has been observing uh, events across the timelines uh, wants to uh, wants wants us to act in a certain way or wants to influence mm -hmm. uh, wants to get uh, things moving to a certain way so if they sent in an agent and the agent told us you go there <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then <laughs> that, that's not good yeah that's not that good however if they send in an agent who hires a guy who hires a guy who hires a guy who mm. orders work yo bring us these uh, these bits of data and then the person bringing them these bits of data sees something suspicious and maybe in one of many variations gets suspicious enough to do something about it mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the sort of ball, ball has gotten rolling or the 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 downstream reality has been manipulated without actually you know uh meddling so, so essentially a a murphy operative hasn't just hopped into the same timeline as scribe and said to scribe hey you need to go to this station yeah. and investigate this stuff it's more through loads of channels just gentle nudges yeah and from person uh, to person. yeah and from that perspective uh the important question is so uh, why are they doing this nudging? What what are they trying to meddle? And uh, and very often the answer is they are uh, setting the uh, dream team people uh, towards certain likelihoods, or they put them into certain situations. Mm -hmm. So if well, somebody essentially if, yeah. is what happens when when scribe with all this data it. it forces him into contact with Gnarly and ultimately Jewel, who mm -hmm. are all important people in their own right, so... Yeah, uh, and this, uh, from the other side, this would also mean that uh, the reclaimer ship that Gnarly saw crashing through the cloud mm -hmm. and that came back with the, uh, with the Synax data uh, either somebody also hired that ship to do something there or somebody helped to put that data there so it's like there's there's this nudging from different directions I have a question yes the ship that Gnarly tries to warn off of going into the void cloud mm -hmm. that is then spat back out into his area mm -hmm. Is that ship the same ship as the one that went in? Uh, I would I would think no. So because uh, the void cloud is basically a hole in reality, and mm -hmm. uh, things that go in 
don't necessarily and more more often than not they don't end up in the same reality it is that there 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 was a switch at some point whether whether the switch was accidental or uh or actively made by somebody that i don't know but uh mm, but the ship that went in is definitely not the ship that came out or like or, or like at, at least it is not the same incarnation it is not the same reality version of that ship <laughs> i i thought that was the case mm -hmm. but i just wanted to mm -hmm. make sure mm -hmm. just to be uh yeah we're on the same page there y'all <laughs> <laughs> Mine's empty. I had a delicious cup of Earl Grey, and uh, now it's empty. Mine's so getting up. empty too. Like I have, I I have depleted my tea. Depleted uranium. The energy source has worn out. Uh, I think it was such a good cup of tea because it was in a small cup, and that's my stance. Mm. I think that's. Less water? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Less water, more tea. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I was almost picking my nose then. I was like... <laughs> mm, juicy. Uh, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting distracted. Um, Onward. We are. Yes. It's the tea, damn it. Um, yeah, so... We've covered Servo, we've covered mm -hmm. bringing the characters together and, and why and how that... Although, um, oh okay, so I suppose Gnarly's, Gnarly's whole thing being brought in, uh, I, there is some interference from, from Murphy in some way, or, or some down-the-line interference from Murphy mm -hmm. um, that results in him going to Svalbard. The fact, the fact that those two uh, scribe and Gnarly... Uh, come together at Synax, work out some of the data. That is the pushing nudge that puts them on course with with Jewel, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I don't even think there needs to be any direct or or, or many layers indirect meddling with Jewel specifically. Nope. Just that Scribe and Gnarly are already on the path mm -hmm. by dint of what's on the or what's on the list or mm -hmm. the information they've recovered. So I think that works really well. That that enforces everything you've just said. Yeah, and and besides, uh, because Jewel's name is already in the list, that mm -hmm. that that has been so. It's like in, indirectly that nudge has already been made during the first two nudges. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how are setting this up? <laughs> cool. uh, so we. So we've established that they all get together. We've established that there's going to potentially be some sort of really cool Fast and Furious. There's a shitty ship. Uh, you guys can use that. We've got to use these mm -hmm. good ships for actually important stuff. Jewel, little Missy. Um, uh, so they. Little Miss Rich bitch. <laughs> yeah, man. She, thinks she can boss us around. We know what the deal is, man. We've been doing this thing for many, many. Insert relevant time unit here. Um, some. Okay, so then from there they've got a choice, right? And I think what's most likely going to happen is that they track Fortune down. Mm hmm. I think Fortune is the next yeah, step because. Yes. If Jewel is concerned for his safety at all, I think she's going to yes. do something to resolve that. Kill their ASAP. Uh -huh. and, and also, I don't remember if. Uh, if I have had this idea before, or if this is a new one, but uh, uh, Fortune's settlement could also serve as a sort of checkpoint where where you can drop information for Trista. Mm, okay, that's cool. I like that. Mm. And the important point about Fortune, again, I don't remember if I have actually vocalized this, is that uh, the uh, Trelasi 2, which is supposedly uh, too expensive to to colonize because there are be better pastures uh, just one planet over, uh, actually has quite large uh, like stealth population settled in the uh, uh, in the polar.
smaller regions in uh, enclosed settlements. So it's like they, and and again, I'm using the similar idea uh, in the base camp story. Uh, there, the bigger moon of Ekurana Fourth was it Fourth? I think it was. Uh, yeah, uh, the bigger moon of Ekurana Fourth uh, has. Uh, the the planet side is is full of oceans or more oceany, and the far side is is more mountainous and and, and seismically active. And there, the atmosphere is also uh, non-optimal uh, in that it is uh, it is very ac oxygen rich, which makes it a fire hazard. <laughs> uh, yep. Which uh, which my my brave units uh, sometimes uh, tackle with, but there also uh, the uh, the settlements or the uh, I think I didn't I think I didn't put like uh, huge col colonized uh, parts there, but I but I did put uh, like uh, industrial and farm complexes that are. Uh, under the ocean on the planet side uh, where where you have also enclosed environments and controlled uh, atmosphere so the same applies in Trelasi 2 where again mm -hmm. the settlements are not actually in the temperate zone but they are at the at the edge of temperate or or at the at the edge of polar region uh, where it's cold anyway so uh, they have these uh, enclosed stuff there do, what do we think Fortune's feelings are? Like when we turn up at Trelasi and, and Fortune's uh, just doing his thing, is he happy? No, uh, actually I, I would think that they have kept in touch uh, through the network of contacts, so it's, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, so, it's, so it's not a surprise. Give me a second. Yeah. So uh, I would I would think it is not a case of uh, just showing up on his doorstep. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's more like a case of something that uh, showing up on his doorstep because the thing is so urgent that it can't uh, go through the usual protocol. I may have misspoken. I mean, uh, how is how is fortunes? How is Fortune adjusting to life on Trelasi 2? Like, what's ah, his okay. feelings uh, about being on Trelasi 2 and his life there and that sort of thing? Oh, uh, I, I, I would think that, well, I would think that he chose to stay there. He's using mm. his, uh, he's using, uh, he's putting his uh, expert knowledge into good use. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He is using his biotechnician knowledge and uh, and the food production knowledge very well there, and uh, and he he is a very valuable component of uh, of of these uh, secret uh, secret colonies. Okay, yeah, I, th I think that flies. That's pretty cool. And what his own thoughts are in this, I'm not sure. Like. Uh, we don't even. We, we, I think we we will have to examine him a little bit more, and we will have to probably examine. Probably relieved to be anywhere but the prison station is probably a big. Yeah, top yeah. Of like he mind. he is he's quite free there, uh, mm. and he is doing research. He's probably developing some some new composite life forms, maybe. Maybe he cool. may, maybe he even has an ambition to uh, to secondary terraform or you know to tweak the planet's atmosphere through some uh, through some organism or organisms or or a system like I, I don't know like this. working working out a ter uh, a permafrost bacteria that uh, that binds the uh, compound that they don't want. For example. This is brilliant because it actually creates a point of tension that Fortune's going to want to stay here and do his work, mm -hmm. right? But Jewel yeah. knows it's like it's too dangerous, man. You can't stay mm -hmm. here. You've got to come with us. And that's, that's going to create, I think, a point of tension, which is going to be, again, quite fun to explore in the book. 
Yeah, um, I think uh, I think that's uh, that's what I would go with as well. So it's it's like it's like uh, a little bit like Shepherd Book moment. Like he's there with his uh, uh, with his new colonists and uh, and he's happy to see the big damn heroes, but he's mm -hmm. he's staying right there. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a real interesting thing to tackle. I'm looking forward to that. So they've they've accomplished what they need to at Trilasi Two. Uh, potentially this could be. <coughs> um, uh, a, a contention point, not only just because of Jewel and Fortune, Fortune not really wanted to come with Jewel, but also um, another element, a another element might turn up and make life difficult for them as well. But that's up in the air at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go on. Uh, so, like, from from the opposing side, uh, we can. So, so, so basically. From the moment that uh, that scribe escapes with the data, uh, we should start the ticking clock uh, of when when trouble catches up with them. Mm. Not not like not coyote trouble, but like uh, complications. Yeah. So uh, so like because because he escaped with, with the data even though the doctor is programmed to let him go the doctor can still cause him nastiness and and can alert and uh, can alert people and since uh, uh, since servo himself has been summoned so uh, as you said uh, Ser servo has to react to several situations Mm -hmm. And if uh, if his uh, uh, if his efforts to mm, reappropriate Corey are hindered because he is reacting to the situation at the at the moon base, that means that he he has been summoned and and he he knows that something has escaped. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, here's here's an idea. Uh, the local local universe servo could even lament that why can't I be at several places at once? <laughs> and then some <laughs> Murphy operatives like, uh, you wish, <laughs> 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 or like you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty clever. Yeah. So so basically, as soon as as soon as the uh, nudge has been made. There has to be some sort of uh, some sort of uh, chase with the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think that's uh, suitable. Yeah, uh. and uh, and while and here's an extra idea. Uh, while uh, the local servo is uh, uh, is handling the situation with breach with the pulse attack and the breach in his research base uh, he he would also want to, to um, uh, want to activate uh, his uh, uh, his henchmen or his uh, local op operatives so this could this could mean that he he tasks the motherfuckers with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I <coughs> personally, in in my mind, I think that if anything's going to cause the most trouble for Jewel and Fortune, it it's going to be those guys. Yeah, um, and uh, and at this point, I would say that they are not uh, operating on their own anymore. It's more like. Servo has given them a chance to redeem their uh, prior uh, uh, their prior uh, mishaps or their prior mm -hmm. conflict of, of interest. So maybe if mm -hmm. before they have used his resources uh, for their own gain and let their own feelings uh, uh, let their own feelings ruin Servo's gain. Mm -hmm. 
or at least uh, they basically their their revenge uh, plan fucked things up. Uh, then uh, now Servo could uh, could task them again, and and because he knows their their history with Harpers, he could say like, okay, so I have I have a special assignment for you. Uh, these people were on the list, and. Uh, and uh, and now you can do something about it or z z z something like that. I'm liking this. Mm. I'm liking this. Okay, so the Trelasi two incident resolved. One of the crew members. Uh, the, 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 the wait okay. right there, orange. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so uh, I would say that. The story beat here is Jewel makes contact with Fortune. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So we don't yet resolve okay. anything. So it's there there is no incident yet to uh, yet to cover or, or like I would I would say that yes the clock is ticking, the bad guys are uh, are uh, homing in, but they are not there yet. I just uh, meant in in terms of the story oh, okay. moving on to the to the next sort of okay. what happens after uh, Trelasi But even even so, I wouldn't say that they are moving on. It's more like they are opening up uh, more of the map. Well, actually, maybe we can discuss this then because uh, whatever happens at Trelasi Two, mm -hmm. then the the in my head the decision between the the group is made to go back to the prison station. Yes, that, uh, that I agree, but I, f I think the meaning of this should be different. So it's like, uh, when they rendezvous uh, with Fortune, then Fortune gives them so some sort of information that makes them decide to go visit the prison station. Mm. Uh, but, this, uh, uh, but this doesn't mean that they are moving on, this is more like... Uh, they have business in the tr in Trelasi system, and during that business, they visit Fortune. They will try to uh, interact with the prison station, which at first fails. Then they will have to uh, turn to Raptor to regain to to call in some favors and. Uh, <laughs> And and regain their trust and like ah oh, we come bearing goodies we have <laughs> uh, we have a whale fish and a nude model for you or whatever <laughs> 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 so and and I I would think that uh, the uh, Trelasi two Raptor and prison station situation should be intertwined uh, in some way so that uh, things are developing in parallel there maybe even mm -hmm. split the party hmm? uh, this is a terrible so idea <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly so so it's I'm like i want for it <laughs> <laughs> so so when you when you do split the party it means you really need to mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so so that's 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 why that's why I am so reluctant to hear the phrase when we're done with Trelasi we go to prison station. No, no, no. These things are, mm. are tied together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one is on the orbit of the other. <laughs> so And they sort of knock onto one another. So Fortune giving them some information on the prison station yeah. encourages them to check out the prison station, but because they can't get access they have to seek out Raptor's help a little bit. Yeah. And so they all sort of link into one another, which is something we try to do in K D is that if if it doesn't develop the story, get it out of there. Essentially, just we want to keep moving the story forward. Events happen yeah. to drive other events forward. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So basically, even though the events are moving forward, uh, our heroes are sort of going back and forth now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whatever, <laughs> and, and and now, so whatever development is catching up uh, with them. Uh, on Trelasi, this should catch up with them when they have just uh, 
uh, achieved something at the prison station. So it's like uh, maybe they only just uh, got in touch with the the guard who didn't uh, the guard who stayed behind, mm -hmm. and they have and they have uh, taken him on board, and they are returning to Trelawney when uh, when some shit goes on or like when when some shit kicks in mm -hmm. in the fan <laughs> 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 so 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 that's that's like very very vague very uh very general thinking and it could also be uh, and the, this is a tangent and this might not work but uh, what if Fortune isn't even letting them on uh, with the whole extra population. Although I don't know. So yeah, uh, the the fact that Trelawney too is more populated than everybody thinks. On one hand, this is a this is a point that. Uh, this is a point that's sort of like an add-on uh, to the Seeker storyline but on the other hand they could be just rendezvousing with Fortune uh, near the uh, near the space harbor or spaceport and they don't even know uh, what he's been up to so they they think that he maybe he has a little hermit hut somewhere in mm -hmm. in the jungle <laughs> And then, when there is a reason to hide, there is this whole, oh, by the way, let me introduce you to my people. <laughs> uh, which, uh, again, uh, would be continuing the whole theme of uh, people getting uh, used to the land, people using secret resources, people mm -hmm. sort of uh, making their secret... Uh, uh, sort of secret home, adjusting to nature, uh, finding refuge there and protecting somebody else by it. So so this is the sim similar <laughs> similar theme that goes through Seeker Base Camp uh, and in the end with the big story. There's a theme! Theme, yeah, that's, that's the mm. thing, like at, at first I was worried that Oh my god, the story beats or the the sort of logic of certain preparations is exactly the same uh, mm -hmm. for Trista and Smith and like oh uh, unoriginal uh, bad but it's ah but if if we if we make it a, a running gag and a running theme then it's okay mm -hmm. again. <laughs> I think also because there are reasons, right? The, yeah, and, the... and 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 also the yeah, it's like the planetary bug out uh, program. So, so the it ties in very well with the whole Murphy station itself. So, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it just works. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we sound like Todd Howard. It just works. No. No, no, um. no, no. It, it 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 works. It works because it makes sense, and it is also, yeah. and I I would say that it is a, it is a very sort of, personally, appealing theme. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. It's like I do. Uh, there was a very simple game that came out a few, possibly last year. It's a post-apocalyptic survival game. Mm -hmm. Graphics are very basic, gameplay is very basic, but I absolutely love it because resource gathering and preparing and mm -hmm. making yourself powerful enough to deal with the... It's demons in this game mm -hmm. and demons occasionally attack your base or you go out and rescue people and encounter demons. Um, <laughs> It's a bit. It's a bit of a twist. I mean, you you essentially could have put zombies in there. Uh, it's fine. You could have put any any bad enemy in there. It would have been fine. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it and yeah, I think just because that idea of gathering resources and and building stuff up and mm -hmm. just making a difference essentially, uh, it really appeals to me. So yeah, there is a thing yeah, and me. Stories. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so uh, yeah, I, I would say that the whole uh, use your current resources to future proof and to and to location proof is is kind of like it's 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 something that seems so natural to us that we have made more mm -hmm. than one character do it. <laughs> yeah. So let's just oh, run yes. with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So. Beyond this point, the notes get a bit scattered, short. and I think that's that's fair because yeah. we're looking further into the distance, and not as many things are solidified. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, what happens at the prison station is that Jewel and or Team Jewel, let's call mm -hmm. them, uh, as a collective for now, because we don't know the specifics, uh, they make contact with and rescue the Murphy Yeah, I, I would say well, the, that they retrie <laughs> retrieve the Murphy operative yeah. slash the, the guard who stay behind the, the guard mm -hmm. who, who helped Fortune uh, escape yeah. And then this is where it gets really foggy for me, S something happens <laughs> as you'll see from my notes there's a big chunk that just says something happened and yeah. the, I think your notes specified that the Murphy operative explains some stuff and 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 through that, Team Jewel have got access to uh, to going up a timeline or yeah, yeah. down a timeline, whatever we decide. Uh, um, I, I think uh, I think I used the same logic as with Deja Vu. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, from from the uh, from the top dog perspective, when you're bringing in operatives. You are bringing in people from the branching timelines. So if you extract somebody, you extract them from downstream. So we're going up. Yeah. So going up, going quote unquote back in time, uh, mm -hmm. from from their perspective. And when you send the operatives out there, then it's more likely that you're sending them downstream or to to the futures. Uh, but but yeah, I think let's uh, let's let's pull them up. Mm -hmm. at least one level I think this works well as well because we I don't know if we're going to do it in collision course this might be something that's for the later book but I like the idea that we might encounter people that we've encountered before mm -hmm. that, that we previously thought would were dealt with right mm -hmm. yeah uh, but their their attitudes and who they are as people is potentially way different in the timeline that we're yeah. in yeah uh, and uh this is a no. This is a note about the nature of reality. So, uh, at some point, we have to put a diagram somewhere. So, each given timeline or each given uh, reality itself is branching out into mm -hmm. many possible futures or many possible timelines. Mm -hmm. And the point is that these branchings are infinite as are the individual timelines in each quote unquote level and there there is no uh, there is no uh, increase of information because that's that's just how reality is uh, in universe uh, it's just that the characters have gained the means to interact with these layers so it's like yeah uh, for from from outsider perspective everything looks the same it's just that these guys have gained the technology that allows them to go inside uh, quote, quote unquote inside a given timeline and probe its possible futures but while you're in the timeline it is real for you or like mm -hmm. it, if, if, if you're in the timeline then then it is as real as, as anything else and uh, this uh, and and all this sort of layered structure means that if you are coming from from these uh, branching from <laughs> <laughs> uh, so which which hand uh, okay so if you if you are coming from from these uh, uh, branching variations if you're coming from downstream then it's parent reality or the reality that these uh, smaller branches or sub branches are are gathering into not only is it different 
uh, it is also in a way it is a sum of some of these uh, it is a result of these uh, variations so it's like uh, if you were able to uh, travel sidestep between let's say branch one and branch two then you would see things that are slightly different somewhat different but if you are returning if you are coming from these branches and uh, coming to the quote-unquote stem it means that there are all these other variations that have uh, that are playing into things in these uh, in these possible futures they are coming together in the stem and you might have like uh, uh, you might have things that are different on a more fundamental level so so basically what what i'm trying to say is that it is it is a bigger difference or it is a the difference is different in nature than just uh, uh, a fork in the road it's more mm. like it's a, it's a whole uh, cutlery drawer put together yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when when you put it like that it's so simple right i i fully understand all the <laughs> <laughs> we, we will we, we will probably have to we will have to make that example in universe somehow like we did it with mm -hmm. the salt tracks <laughs> yeah. Oh, what an amazing moment. There aren't many moments from sort of those. Well, there there are. There, but there is one standout moment throughout that entire Deja Vu storyline is the Smith Risto interaction with the Soul. I fucking love that. Mm. It's easily one of the best moments for me. Um, so, yeah, that was great. Um, so, Jewel and Co. have now gone. Up mm -hmm. to the to the stem, I'm guessing, right? Stem, yes. The, the, the quote unquote stem, um, and from there, some other stuff happens. I think they're made aware of all the stuff that's going on, or some of the stuff at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Murphy gets in, or I don't know if they get in touch directly, but they somehow mm -hmm. assign this group a mission, whether yep. that's rescue someone or or do something and i think my current feeling is it feels like a bit of a cliffhanger mm -hmm. but but if we were to stop the story here where they're stepping into this new time or not new timeline but this this to them it's a it's a it's a new universe new world mm -hmm. to them right it's not the universe they know um do we want to then save the focus for that in the follow-up book or do we do we want to start focusing on it towards the end of this book? You know, like uh, I think I think let's try and see how far we can go with a, with the same focus. Because okay. uh, well, in the base camp story, I stopped there. So I mean, in the base camp story, I stopped before uh, Smith could uh, even explain that uh, that 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 there are more layers. So I, I saved all that for, for a follow-up story because uh, it's... Well, the base camp story is, is a little bit different in nature because there it is just one, one, one person's uh, uh, agenda, one person's, uh, one person's war, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one person's information, one person's uh, mistakes. Whereas in the quote unquote planned missions or or you know the Murphy missions mm -hmm. uh, you extract people you brief them and then and then you send them out on missions but yeah I, I, so I think uh, we can uh, we can use uh, deja vu as a sort of temp template here a little bit so you you have the crew the crew has been extracted they have been pulled to the uh, at least one level up in reality maybe two who knows so I, I, w I would think that they have pulled to a level which is uh, uh, which is like uh, 
which is relevant uh, events wise so, so some uh, uh, back in time enough quote unquote where certain key events have not yet solidified so that they might be able to uh, influence certain events uh, or, or like they, they or, or at least witness certain events solidify in a different way mm -hmm. so yeah I think I think that's uh, the sort of uh, flow of events and solidifying is a good metaphor here so mm -hmm. the top level real 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 is where the variations finally solidify mm -hmm. Whereas but all the this stuff below it's like fluid. Yeah, but w but the the events down below, events in the in the downstream ra uh, layers, uh, the time the downstream timelines, even though they are just as real for the participants, uh, they are the possibilities from from mm -hmm. the uh, from the solid reality point of view. So so again and and again, I'm going to point out that. Uh, uh we don't really care how well this this sort of idea meshes with the uh, actual physics and stuff uh, but mm -hmm. we are going to uh, hang on to it also as a, a metaphor for story writing in that all the drafts and ideas and fragments that uh, that you have and that allow you to see further in the future finally solidify into a a published story uh, <laughs> which in a way contains all those many uh, many variations and and many uh, many alternates but also only only certain variations manifest in the final version Mm -hmm. So that's so that's <laughs> that is the that is the basic uh, build up <laughs> basic build of, of our reality <laughs> basic i think the basic. uh the important the, the important thing is that uh we are setting certain rules that we know yep. might not fit with with physics and science yeah, and yeah. All, that, all that good stuff but we are within the universe sticking to those rules yeah yeah so this this, and, this is how shit works in universe this is mm -hmm. how shit gets ex explained in universe this what uh this is uh, what uh, influences the plot in universe. This is what the uh, characters in universe have to uh, deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So, um, that th I've got nothing beyond that point. Mm -hmm. Beyond that point, yeah, uh, I, I'm open book. <laughs> ready to be filled with glorious notes. Um, one thing that you touched on lightly there was um, uh, going through the, the different timelines and going up a stream. One thing that happens, or I would like to happen, or I have made notes, and the idea is forming in my head for things I would like to happen. <laughs> Elden, Elder Nux realises that he can't get back to his stream, like as far as he's concerned, all the people he's ever known and loved have died, right? His mission is a failure. Mm -hmm. He didn't go back in time. What He more than likely uh, went up a stream, mm -hmm. which meant he, he didn't really have any influence on, on the stream below it. Um, so he, because he can't get back to his timeline and he sees that everybody around him, like OG Nux, as I call him, OG Nux is... is <laughs> having a happy family life with Luna mm -hmm. and all that what he sees what he gave up and he goes a bit off the rails and I'm mm -hmm. thinking in if we ever do the sort of Angerona storyline mm -hmm. with you know the kids you know like the Scooby gang yeah. um, <laughs> their main antagonist is likely to be Elder Nux Ooh. and that's something I'm really toying with the idea with and, and OG Nux <laughs> Will then feel a bit vindicated because he's never liked Elder Nux. Like Aww. the two of them do not get along. Um, he doesn't trust him. The thing is, Nux doesn't believe that he becomes Elder Nux. Mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 sort of almost based on that one lie alone, Nux doesn't believe anything Elder Nux 
tells him beyond that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like he doesn't really have any trust in him. Well, you're obviously lying to me because I I believe I don't become you. Mm -hmm. So what's all this other stuff you're lying about? Um, so yeah, he feels a bit vindicated because Corey was always sort of like, oh hey man, we should listen to Enux. He seems mm -hmm. on the level. He knows what's going on. He's from the future, right? We should mm -hmm. listen to what he's got to say. Um, so yeah, I, that was what I was toying with, and I just like the idea that the uh, Elder Nux either can't get back to his timeline or he he can, and there's nothing there for him like that. I like the latter just... better. Yeah. Yeah. He so... got back to his own timeline, and there's just nothing. Yeah. So it's like uh, I I I don't know that storyline very well, or I I don't remember. Mm. But wasn't it so that uh, shit goes bad, all is lost, and then he tinkers with the servo device and mm -hmm. he thinks he went back in time yeah. and, and now has a chance to rescue those people he lost and then <laughs> the nature of reality is explained to him and, and, and then it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eldenox just yeah and, and 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 that kind of breaks him this means uh already during the deja vu he's gonna start he needs to start cracking already mm -hmm. oh yeah and and since uh, and since he learns of this so late uh he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't sort of. He doesn't. He doesn't uh, go along with the program, so to speak. Yeah. So it's like uh, whereas uh, whereas uh, Smith uh, is uh, Smith learns about this whole reality business pretty much right away when shit starts happening, mm -hmm. and when uh, pre when similar situation happens to her, she already has that knowledge. So she already knows that the reality itself can be manipulated and she has a sort of her own wild ideas about it. So she goes crackpot as well, <laughs> but in a different way. She goes, uh, she goes uh, creative crackpot. Uh, but mm -hmm. Elder Nox, since uh, he doesn't have these creative, creative ideas, and he also can't. Uh, he also can't accept the idea that all those variations that are coming together into this stem reality kind of, sort of, actually, maybe, are becoming the people that he knows and loves, or like the people he lost, uh, are part of this bigger reality. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't accept it, so yeah. he he should start showing more shit sooner so it's like uh, uh, let's let's say if we put any uh, any deja vu stuff up in up to the website soonish maybe and I would like to do that uh, okay. then we can already sort of start looking at the spots where Elder Nox could uh, uh, would sort of sort of start taking even more darker turns because mm -hmm. like right right now he's he's just a friendly guy who's there he seems pretty happy go lucky i think there was in the forum uh when it is explicitly stated to him that he hasn't actually gone back in time mm -hmm. that is when he's like i haven't fucking changed anything although he doesn't swear for some reason elder nux is not keen on swearing i don't know what the deal is yeah like he nux swears like a sailor <laughs> he he ha he has a breakdown moment there but uh uh the it's way a yeah thing. but but the way things read in forum it was still sort of like it was still hopeful for him, but I think mm. let's take let's let's take that hope away. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <Ooh. laughs> Elder Nox's story is just a tragic one anyway. So, like, it, it, I mean, his his entire reality essentially wiped out. It's lost everybody he loves apart from mm. Chaos, Destiny, and Aurora. Are literally his only friends from that reality mm. he thinks he's got a chance he thinks he can come back and, and change things 
but it turns out he can't and and he and when he gets back to his own reality even the friends he had have been lost now mm. uh so that that's absolute tragedy for elder nux but <laughs> nux og nux doesn't care <laughs> just does not give the tiniest he also when it comes to the androna trying to catch up with him elder uh, og nux doesn't feel some responsibility. He thinks he should have dealt with Elden Ark sooner, mm. but he takes enough responsibility that he's the sort of... He doesn't go with the Androna crew, but he gives them equipment and kits them out and mm. sort of says, well, deal, deal with this guy because mm. he's a problem. Um, be careful. Um, so that that was my fault. And mm. we've gone way off course. We were talking about collision course. Now we're talking <laughs> about post post deja vu, right? Which, I mean... <laughs> post, post, post. <laughs> That's decades in the future. So, oh. yeah. Oh, man. Don't ever let anybody accuse us of not forward thinking. And all this stuff is, yeah. is possible for change as well, right? We so, have proof. Yeah. <laughs> Video proof. Yeah. That we are way ahead of this. I don't really have anything else to say about Collision Calls. Just that I'm, I think I'm really excited to get into it. Mm -hmm. and start to see how all these characters interact with one another. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a, a cool deal. Um, I like where it goes so far. I like the, the sort of key points that we've established. Mm -hmm. Presentation, Trilasi too. I'm... I am wondering about some of the mechanics of these things, and mm -hmm. I think, again, that's going to reveal itself in the story, which will be cool. Um, this I'm is... I'm wondering... This Go is on. like uh, the mechanics of the things is as... Uh, as my chief editor says, Dila Techniki. And what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means technical details. <laughs> ah! Or very just, nice. just technicalities. Oh. Okay, go on. Um, and I think the other important thing we've established here today is that talking about spoilers and what, what, what I might consider spoilers, A, some of this stuff might change, mm -hmm. and B, there's the journey of getting to these points. Like, you could say to someone, Endgame spoiler, but actually, when you watch Endgame, the real joy of getting to the point where this awesome thing happens is actually the more impressive thing. Like, you don't care that someone might have told you. You're just like, oh my god, the way we got here was mm -hmm. awesome. So, yeah. And it's like that. If you want to give the Reservoir Dogs example you gave yesterday or the day Yeah, before. it's like when you start... Uh, my my example comes from the place that uh, early on when we were sharing uh, these uh, stories in forum and in uh, uh, and with uh, with to be readers and fans, uh, we used to be worried about uh, what we considered spoilers or like we didn't want to give give away the bigger timeline thing and the universe function thing, etc., etc., etc. And over time, this really started bothering me because uh, we couldn't discuss the uh, more imp uh, more interesting stuff, mm -hmm. and and also, uh, as we as we have learned, uh, some of the stories come out poorer because of this. And then the other day, I was trying to uh, explain the principle that you can only be surprised about something once but the story still will be good or has to be good after that uh, I, I brought the example of Reservoir Dogs to Nox which he uh, watches regularly so mm -hmm. it's like uh, is, it, is it too much to claim that it's one of your favorite movies? Oh, I love that film it Yeah, see, one of so the top, he loves that film five. he watches it all yeah. the time he enjoys the story <laughs> all the time yet every time he knows from the beginning who's the snitch. Mm hmm I know how that story goes. I could probably do the script, but I still love it. <laughs> and and, so. and this is uh this is how I uh how I summarize the worry about spoilers. <laughs> mm hmm And it was a good example and it made me laugh. Um so <laughs> there you go. Um apart from that, I don't think I've got anything else to add to this collision course discussion as of yet. I think I think I just want to start getting into it and <laughs> and putting words on paper. Yeah, um, words on paper, yo. Yeah, we the, 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 we uh, right now 
we have established so many solid points about the uh, infrastructure, about the foundation of the story, mm -hmm. that uh, we would pretty much have to start putting words on paper now, because if we discuss uh, those building blocks too much, uh, <laughs> we we risk falling into the trap of over outlining, where you just mm. come up with schemes and uh, schemes and plots and schemes within plots and plots within schemes, and you never actually get to the words. And then when you actually get to the writing, you're so tired of the plot that it brings no joy. <laughs> <laughs> so I also think possibly you get tired if if you over detail something you it becomes your darling in a way yeah. whereas with these bullet points I yeah, can give or take too. the bullet points right but with, so. the, with the if I invest in something and we have to cut it or or I'm so belligerent that it should stay in the story then that makes a weaker story so yeah, yeah. we've got a lot of nice nice foundation in place anything more might be excessive and I think we we are in a good position now to words on paper this book's gonna write itself man. It's so <laughs> yes it is easy. practically finished <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, I, would, coming soon. I would say that uh we will we will begin our endeavors uh pretty much now in june as soon mm -hmm. as i have turned in my solid draft for that local research shared universe story uh, and uh, and then yeah sh shout out to the writing workshop and uh i would say mid july mid june and mid july we shall definitely have some work sessions with this and yeah. then uh maybe in august maybe try to assign each other specific pieces of the story because Ooh. because what i what i have learned within the last year when he when we have mostly done sol solo shit and uh and uh, consulted so it's like writing solo consulting together seems to be a little bit better model than just trying to cram words uh, in in a joint session. So it's like we can mm. still have joint sessions where I blabber and you write it down or vice versa. <laughs> uh, but uh, it actually seems to work pretty well when either of us takes responsibility for a uh, for a batch of text and then mm -hmm. we discuss the details beforehand or afterwards or whatnot. So yeah, yeah I like that idea. We have now committed to a plan. Ha <laughs> That's exciting. Oh my god. So <laughs> Count of Arms were released today. Uh literally <laughs> uh I don't know, about seventeen hours ago. We're already ready to work <laughs> on the next one. I love that. <laughs> Like they're, they're all not ready, but there's a plan in place, so that's real cool. Um, yeah, I was, we, like, we I was looking at the board, I was like, what am I going to do next, man? Why don't we got that on the, on the cards, and there's some other bits and pieces. I mean, dest <laughs> forging destinies and things. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's, man, uh, it's it's like, uh, oh, this story is almost finished. Uh, am I going to take a break now? <laughs> 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 not a good idea. Dumps. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome well yeah uh That's i haven't got anything else to say yeah me neither thank you for watching it's very good of you let's wrap this uh, up so you can yeah. start waving bye